one that I'm the yeah. but no, feeling next yeah. to low, but please let yeah. me go, ho. All right, that's that new rapper, Big Poo Friends from Fat Boy Fresh 2, dropping next month on the 20th. This is Juice Radio's Fresh Juice. My name's D Money. You can follow me on at Twitter at D Money Juice right here. We got Brother Ali in the building right here. Album Morning in America and Dreaming in Color is out in stores right now. How you doing, my man? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, definitely. Um, I can tell um, your beard right here. I know the early the early pictures of you. I tell there's basically no beard. Now the beard just seems to be getting longer as the time passes. Is there a reason for that? I actually just had it trimmed today. It was it was much bigger, yeah. and I went and got it cleaned up today. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just feels right. Like when I see old pictures of myself with no beard, I'm like, it bothers me. It feels like I've always should have had it. Yeah, it's like uh, almost like it's you now, but it's not you then. That's pretty cool. Well, um, you're actually from Minnesota, right? Um, what what would you describe the Minnesota scene like? For, well, for music and art and everything in general, it's, it's really supportive. Um, the, you know, the city in general or the, you know, the state really supports its own music. Um, I would say in the hip hop scene, it's not so much that way for like hood, more like street artists. There's not a lot of support for street artists there. But um, for people who aren't on that kind of thing, there's a lot of support. And you can go and see an underground hip hop show that's full of people every night of the week. You know, there are people that, it's, it's kind of similar to the hyphy scene in the sense that there are people that are big there that just aren't that big in other places, but they there's a lot of people paying their bills just by playing down the street from where they live and and they don't have jobs and you know there's a lot and, and if I started saying their names you wouldn't know who all of them are you know but um, it's dope it's a really good thing I would say we have atmosphere to thank for that yeah. whenever you have somebody in a scene that shows everyone what the possibilities are uh, people take it more seriously when they know that it, there's a real that it can really happen for them and a lot of people don't like to give credit for that you know there's a lot of people that come out of Minneapolis and say Paul and Twin Cities, a lot of them don't like to, you know, or they kind of shrug it off, but the reality is that none of us were taking it as seriously as we are now, yeah. until Atmosphere did what they did, you know, and that's actually true for, I, I would say for the artists here in Seattle too, you know what I mean, I think that, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, you see, we have artists here that are having great success, that are following that type of music, that approach to making the actual music, right. and the business approach too. Um, so I mean, I, I think that that's a group that you know needs to. People need to know that they created that. You know what I mean? The music side and the business side, they created that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you said, the Seattle scene and Tacoma for that region. Basically, we draw a lot of comparisons with uh, Minneapolis. I know Rhyme Sayers in general. They've came out here a lot, and they got some artists, Greaves, and that like right there. Um, do you know any other artists out here? I do, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Jake One and Vitamin D are, are, you know what I'm saying, those are my people. Those are like, you know, those family. Um, I like The Satisfaction a lot. Um, I like um, uh, Ish. Um, Shabazz Palaces. Yeah, Shabazz Palaces. I love them. Yeah. Like, that shit is so fresh to me. Like, I, I think that's that's the Seattle stuff that really moves me. I'm great friends with Greaves and Budo. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing to me. Yeah, and got to uh, throw Mac Moore in there. Number two in the country first week, 75,000 sold. Um, 78. 70, yeah, he knows, he knows. All right, well, all right, well. Um, that's a, that's a. You know, that's a that's a an achievement. You know what I mean? Um, but um, speaking of the rhyme series, you go way back with them. How um, how did you guys start to get together? We just come from the same place, and, and we approach things the same way. You know what I mean? I, I, Rhyme Series was basically a bunch of people that decided that we were, that just knew we were artists, and we didn't, you know, at the, at the time that we started doing what we do, an atmosphere started before anybody. Uh, you know, atmosphere, Rhyme Series is what it is because of atmosphere, for the most part. Um, but... You know, we just knew that we were artists, and we didn't know what kind of response we were going to get, <laughs> but we built our lives on being artists. 
it's, it's a lot of people who never really tried to do anything else. You know what I mean? Um, we were just very dedicated to doing it. And because we weren't going to be accepted or no doors were going to be open for us in the music industry, we did it by ourselves because we had to. You know, and so a lot of the a lot of the groundwork that a lot of the guys are following now, like Mac Moore, like uh, Mac Miller, um, Wiz Khalifa, you know, people that are that are doing the independent thing. Uh, the the groundwork and the blueprint for what they're doing was created by Atmosphere out of pure necessity. It wasn't a meeting that we had in a boardroom. You know, it wasn't. Um, you know, we didn't have industry connections. We didn't have any of that. It was some people saying, "Okay, I think that there are kids out there, listeners out there, who don't feel like they're being served by the by the rap that exists." Right, right. What we what we're saying is is so unique and so different that I think there's people out there that would attach, that would feel a certain way about it and that would matter to them and so we're going to go to them and we're going to meet them we're going to do a lot of shows it's going to be heavy based on touring um, you know we're going to hang out with the fans they, they can meet us we get to know them talk to them heavy social media you know all of, all of that stuff was created by atmosphere because of necessity you know what I mean and to this day they've done nothing but grow you know what I mean for I mean the, the first thing came out the first rhyme series album came out in 95 you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. so you know we, 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 we're, we're talking about 17 years now that we've been doing this you know what I mean yeah. and um, it's beautiful and, it, and, it, and it's it's really cool to see people take that formula or take that it's not even a formula but mm -hmm. just take that approach to making and selling music and take it in different directions yeah. you know what I mean yeah to, to where like you know it's it's cool to have watched Atmosphere do it yeah. you know what I mean and I was following it too so I can't say like oh they're because I'm following it yeah, I'm just right. following it from with inside I'm following it from up close you know what yeah. I mean it's kind of like um you know, it's kind of like being being uh, Michael Jordan's little brother or something like that. <laughs> I like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I learned it from them too, and and I, you know, and, and have put my own tracks on that on that. I've put my own tracks on that road as, as well. You know. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But it's really cool to me, as somebody who loves and admires Atmosphere, and work with them so carefully, closely, yeah. and see people uh, replicating that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's dope. Dope. Well, um, all um, artists listening, you just have a lot to chew on right there. We're actually, we're going to play a couple songs, let you think about it a little more. We're actually going to play one of your cuts, actually, um, off the album um, Morning in America, Dreaming in Color. It's Only Life I Know. It's a song about poverty. How familiar are you with it before we play it? Way too familiar. Um, I, you know, I, I'm definitely very up close and personal. This is a song, this song is, um, you know, I think that in our society, our middle class has been taught to blame the poor for the problems that we have. And so this is a song, and, and you know, I lived half of my life in the hood. I moved a lot when I was a kid. So I'd live a year in the hood and I would live in the suburbs. And I know what life is like in the hood. I know what it feels like to be trapped in that situation. And then I also know what the suburbs is like. And I know that those people that come from that suburb situation have no idea what it feels like to be trapped in poverty or even feel trapped in poverty. So this song is is um, you know trying to shed some light on what that feel what what it feels like to really be trapped in poverty and to not have a road out. All right, and with that, we're gonna play um, "Only Life I Know" off of Morning in America, "Dreaming in Color," and we'll get more about this album in the next break. We back on Juice Radio's Fresh Juice, D-Money here. We still got Brother Ali in the building right here. You just heard a new one from Freeway, who stabbled a little bit with the Rhyme Sayers. Um, new one from him, Jungle, off the upcoming album, Diamond in the Rough, dropping next month on the 13th. But, I mean, we're here with you, man, so let's talk about this album, Morning in America and Dreaming in Color. It's a very visual title. What's it really mean to you? Well, it's twofold. The first side, the Morning in America side, talks about the, the dismal situation that we have in our country uh, economically, socially, spiritually morally, I think we're morally in really bad shape right now <laughs> and
and um, people are suffering. Well, you know, people are suffering here, and we're also causing suffering around the world. So it's, the idea is to not let people suffer silently. Somebody has to, you know, be challenging us, and that's the difference between pop music and. Uh, art, yeah. you know, pop, there is an art to pop as well. Yeah. Right, right. But you can tell the difference. Pop, pop artists, they want to be loved. They want you to love them, so they say what they know you already want to hear. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then and then you have prophetic artists, or you have um, you know truth tellers that are here to say what is uncomfortable for you to hear, mm -hmm. but they say it because they genuinely love you. Um, there's a difference. Wanting to be loved is different from loving you. Yeah. When somebody loves you, they tell you the truth. When somebody loves you, they tell you, you know, my friends will tell me, man, I'm concerned, man, you're gaining a lot of weight, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not what I want to hear. That's not, you know what I mean? <laughs> but when somebody says that, if I feel funny in the moment, but then I realize this person really cares about me, and they're willing to wit risk the friendship for that. Yeah. When, so, when somebody is making music, and they're just thinking about, well, what does everybody want a song about? And then I'm gonna go make an anthem about that. Yeah. They're they're looking for love. They're not love. They're not give, putting any love out in the world. They're they're soliciting. They're soliciting attention. You know what I mean? Right. And that's fine. But there's a difference. And I, I feel that part of my mission, out of the love that I have, is to challenge us and make us look in the mirror about who we really are and what we've really become. Yeah. A lot of a lot of my fans, um, a lot of my listeners. Our privileged people, mm -hmm. um, yeah, whether it be you know white privilege or male privilege or straight privilege, or middle right. class privilege, whatever it is, um, and I think that we all know something is wrong with the world. Yeah. Um, and basically, the thing is that the people at on the top, the people in power, um, you know, are going to need to share some of what they have. Yeah. Um, but the reality is that. Our privilege, whatever it is, connects us to this system of injustice. And so until we're willing to actually work to destroy our own unfair privilege, yeah. the unfair advantages that we have based on the fact that the system is unjust, based on the fact that our institutions are unjust. Yeah. Our institutions are racist. Yeah. So so me and you have just being in these vessels that we're in and these bodies we're in, mm -hmm. we have unfair advantages. Yeah. And especially because our society is so highly competitive. Yeah. If it wasn't a competitive based society, and people say that's human nature, but that's not true. Yeah. Not all societies are competitive like ours. Ours is hyper individual, hyper competitive, and so in a situation where everybody's fighting over goods, resources, opportunities, and chances, the fact that we have that other people have drawbacks that we don't have yeah. means that we're collaborating with uh, um, that system, yeah. and so we can't we can't expect the world to ever be fair. We can't expect the people at the top to part with their unfair advantages yeah. if we're not willing to part with ours. And so a big part of what I'm saying on this album is that we need to look at who we are. We inherited this situation, but what are we going to do with it now? You know, and we start talking about these things as a, as a person in this privileged body. Um, you know, people start saying, well, what do you want to, you just want to be black or something like that. Uh, you know, if to celebrate Mother's Day doesn't mean that you think you're a woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean I think I'm a mother yeah. to celebrate, you know, but to say like, man, women need to be mothers need to be celebrated you know um, those of us that come out for gay rights that doesn't mean that we're we think we're trying to be gay right, right, right. you know the reality is that um, we can we can be more complete humans we don't have to just be these white this white thing that's, that was in, invented right. by people in power to separate the, the masses we don't have to do we don't have to just keep going along with that that we can actually love of somebody that's not us yeah. and that's such a foreign concept in our society to actually love somebody else and and think that they deserve everything that you you deserve for yourself right right that's a very foreign thing um, but it's an important thing to talk about so that's what the dreaming and color is about that we can reimagine our society with everybody being able to contribute but the problem the, 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 that's problematic you know uh, white people like to talk about white liberals like to talk about gay rights right right that's very that's a very comfortable subject to talk about because you get to be a good guy yeah but 
you're not complicit. You don't you don't have to really feel any any sense of collaboration with injustice because you can be like, well, it's a it, you know the situation is with gay. So if I step up for gay people, then I'm clear. I'm in the clear. Yeah, yeah. It's different with race yeah. because whether we because our society is based on institutionalized racism that there's yeah. there, there are, there's racism and there's a racial class, caste system mm-hmm. in our society that it, me and you no matter how much we don't want to participate we participate and we practice racism to a certain degree yeah. just by leaving the house yeah. the fact that if me and you were to walk into a store with hoodies on people would think oh it must be cold outside yeah um, you know if our friends did that you know our black friends did that it'd be uh, sir, can you take you know? Can you take your hoodie down? Are you okay? Are you gonna buy anything? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, we interact with the police. We buy a house. We buy a car. Um, you know, we show up. Show up at a venue. Um, you know what I mean? Our, our entire. So for us to talk about race, there's a lot more. We have to be a lot more mature, and it's a lot more challenging. Yeah. And that's why. Um, you know, that's why you get a lot of liberals that are really happy to talk about gay rights, yeah. but they don't want to talk much about race because it's, it's a lot more challenging. But this is the work that we have to do, and we have to keep track of everybody's dignity. It's, it is important to talk about uh, gay rights. You know what I mean? It's important to talk about women's rights. It's important to talk about immigrants' rights. It's important to talk about, you know, the poor and poverty in general. Um, you know, native native people's rights. All of this stuff. But, um, you know, we I, I think that our society is still so hinged upon race <laughs> and the body that I was born in and the people that my that support me uh, the the majority of them because it's not completely like that but we have an opportunity those of us who um, it's not a new phenomenon in American music for white people to love mm-hmm. when somebody looks like them can do something that's considered a black thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. white people love it when a white person can rap really good yeah. and I rap really good and a lot of, a lot of you know there's a lot of people that do the question is what do we do with this whether it's in music yeah. or not in music yeah. you know what I'm saying like do we just do we just quietly let uh, like ride our privilege out into the sunset because we have other problems in life? Yeah, you know you can say, "Well, I'm poor. I'm not privileged. I'm poor." Well, okay, you're economically oppressed, but you're racially privileged. Yeah, you know, and me, like I'm, you know, I'm legally blind. I'm not binary. You know, I can't drive. And all this. So yeah, okay, I have a handicap, but I'm still racially privileged. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's the that's what our generation needs to be talking about and dealing with. You know what I mean? Especially if we're gonna be taking other people's culture as ours. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like all of these super hot white rappers now that are that are setting records. You know what I mean? Um, you know this this is still a black art form. You know what I mean? And and it's not that they're better. It's not that we're better at rapping because we're not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Macklemore is really good at rapping. Yeah. Is he better than Kendrick? Is he better than Big Boy? Right. Is he better right. than, um, you know, Daisy? <laughs> well, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, right. Is, is he is he uh, better than? And I mean, there are underground rappers. Is he better than Fonte? Right. Right. If we want to talk about people that don't sell as much. Yeah. Is he, is exactly. he better than? Is he better than Fonte? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. He's fucking not. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's not. Um, yes. But the reality is that the people who have money, you know. And, and and me, you know, am I I'm dope? Am I better than Feral Munch? Hell yeah, no. Right. I'm speaking out on things. Am I better at that than Dead Prez? No. Mm-hmm. Am I better than Immortal Technique? No. Am I better than Public Enemy? No. Am I better than you know? Um, but the people that have the money and the time yeah. and the wherewithal to support music. They would rather have somebody that looks like them. That's just the world we inherit. Mm -hmm. So the question now is, what do we do about that? Now that we're in this situation, do we just enjoy it? Or do we actively work? Or do we we tell the truth? And that's all we can do is know the truth and tell the truth. Well, shit, man. I mean, you really dropped the bomb on this. But, um, I mean, um, seriously, we can talk about this world that we want, obviously. And a lot of people say that they want this world, but nobody has the answer on how we can get to that. 
I, I think that I do, and I think a lot of people do. I think people have for years. If we look at the people that have really made a difference in this world, it's people that have united the common people based on what they did, what they demand, and what they know they deserve. Yeah. You know, like um, if we think about the fact that, like, what Dr. King did, what Gandhi did, mm -hmm. you know, what Harvey Milk did, what Leonard Peltier did, what Asada Shakur, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the Black Panthers and what the you know mm -hmm. all of these movements for rights are yeah. based on the Black Freedom Movement. The whole blueprint for how it's done is based on that. Yeah. Um, and that was that was the idea of getting common people together and having strength in numbers. And so you know I think the Occupy Movement is a is a mm -hmm. you know has grown into some really cool things. Where I live, we have Occupy Homes, where the Occupy Movement deals with. Pressuring banks and making banks renegotiate with people instead of kicking them out of their house. Right, right. And we've had a lot of victories, and we're going to keep doing that, and that's going to grow. I think it's way too easy in American life, especially for privileged people, mm -hmm. um, to say, "Well, you can't change it, yeah. or it's going to change slow." That's what they said with with race stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't rush it. These things take time. Yeah. And the reality is that we have still haven't solved this problem. Yeah. Because we keep saying it takes as long or as short as we want it to. Yeah. As we needed to, we say it takes time because we like the unfair advantage that we have, mm -hmm. and a certain mm -hmm. part of us feels like we need it. Yeah, you know, because it's such a hyper. But the reality is that if the people at the top weren't hoarding everything, we wouldn't need to fight with the Mexicans over. You know, we wouldn't need to be arguing, and we wouldn't need to be holding people. You know, uh, keeping black kids out of college yeah. by taking away affirmative action stuff. We know damn well that our education system under underserves them. Yeah. You know what I mean? We want to take a, be, because we like that advantage, and we think we need it because there's so little out there that that we think we got to fight over. But if we would ever think about, well, like, why are we fighting over scraps instead of demanding that the people who actually make these people at the top. Mm -hmm. We have this idea in America of like this myth of like the self-made success story. Right. So you say, well, like Steve Jobs did that by himself. So mm -hmm. he deserves to be rich while the people that make his stuff are right. basically living like slaves. Right. And that's not, it's just untrue. Yeah. There's no self-made anybody. Yeah, right. So all, all, all you know, all that those of us on the left are saying is... You should have to, our society and our system and our structures should make it make uh, those people share what they have with the people that help make it possible. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us make this shit possible. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you know, these are things we're working on, and there there are solutions. The solution is to get people together that are willing to sacrifice something, mm -hmm. willing to go to jail, willing to sacrifice their job, and really, when it comes down to, it, you got to be willing to sacrifice your life. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, my, my, my uh, contributions have been very small compared to what other people have done. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I have a Department of Homeland Security file, and I'm monitored and I'm watched just for the few little things that I've said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got, I got removed from a tour by a big, you know, corporate sponsor. Yeah. And never got a sp corporate sponsorship thing after that because of what I talk about. You know, I got, um, you know. I've been to jail, you know, in the Occupy movement. I've been arrested for that. And, um, you know, it's difficult for me to go to Canada. Yeah. You know, every time we go to Canada, I'm just like, oh, man, because they, they can choose to either not let me in mm -hmm. or, you know, when I went last time, they were like, hey, just don't get arrested for this a bunch of times. But we know what you're doing. And it's all good. Mm. But, I mean, that's their choice. It just depends yeah. on what agent I get. I could show up there and they could be like, no, you're a criminal. You have to go home. Mm. And, I, you know. So, I mean, we, we, but everybody has, we have to be willing to make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. When people say, well, I don't know what to do. It's not what, that we don't know what to do. It's that yeah. we're not willing to sacrifice to make it happen. Yeah. You know, so those of us, we have to muster that courage. And that courage has to come from somewhere. You know, we're, our society doesn't give us courage. Our society says, go along with the thing. Yeah. Um, you know. But believe in what we're telling you and just go with the program. Right. You know, and that doesn't fuel confidence and that doesn't fuel courage and that doesn't fuel sacrifice. We're not supposed to sacrifice anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Eat all you want, get all the toys you want. Right. You know. Right. And um, not not only will we not sacrifice for other people, we won't even sacrifice for ourselves. Yeah. We won't even not buy the iPad so that we can pay our taxes. Mm -hmm. We won't not buy the iPad so we can pay off our credit card bill. 
Yeah. We'll go ahead and buy the new iPhone mm -hmm. with a credit card, and then so we won't even sacrifice for our own yeah. well at best interest. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but people are waking up because it's gotten so bad. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and that's and that's 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 who I'm here to talk to. I'm here to to ask for that. That's yeah. what that's what we need. We need people that are willing to step up, be courageous, be in this for the long haul, be long distance runners. Yeah. Um, but that's what that's I, I think that's why we have hip hop in our lives. Yeah. Hip hop was created by people who had absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And so if we say we care about hip hop, if we allow hip hop to enrich our lives, but don't ever think about the people that created it or the conditions that created it, then we're thieves. Yeah. If 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 we if we get into hip hop and we say, man, I love this music, I love the people that made it, and I'm willing to sacrifice so that they don't have to live like that anymore. Because I love, if we really love music or art, we love the people that made it. Yeah. But we're taught to just take. You know, we're col we're colonial minded. You know what I mean? We're we're. Um, we're empire minded so somebody else has something and we just take right, that right. and then we cast them away we get rid of them you know so I, I, I would hope that um, I would hope to hear some more challenging stuff from this this uh, new breed of white rappers that are doing great and selling yeah. a lot of units yeah you know challenge your listeners challenge your listeners and I'm not just talking about a song I'm saying we need to live this yeah. we need to live this that this thing that people are getting rich from and I'm not one of them yeah. so I could just sound like a hater yeah. I don't give a shit I'm telling my telling yeah. the truth yeah. um, and I'm not just saying this because these people are rich and I'm not right. I'm saying it because uh, because it's the truth and it's right um, this thing that, the, that people are getting rich off of um, came from a situation that needs our, us to care yeah. we need to care about our fellow human beings yeah. especially if we're going to be out here partying and making all this money exactly. off their culture exactly. right Right. So that's 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 my challenge to 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 these guys. You know what I mean? That's my challenge to these guys. Yeah, I mean that I mean I really appreciate all the music that you do, the message it needs to be set, right? But um something that is kind of interesting especially in the hip hop community. I mean, we know we want this thing, but everybody knows that the election is kind of a farce. But is it a positive thing to vote? That's a great way to put it, and that's a great question. I, I think yes. I think voting is symbolic at this point. Um, I think the president is symbolic at this point. Um, but symbols are our our society. Are, we're very immature. We're not deep thinkers. We're very surface thinkers. Mm -hmm. So symbols are important. Unfortunately, symbols are way more important than they ought to be. Yeah. So the symbol of a black president is important, and I'm happy about that. Yeah. Um, the symbol of voting is important. It's an, it's an important symbol to just say, at least I went to the polls one day and did something because I'm at least thinking that I'm doing something for my for my countrymen. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it's important to vote. Also, people died so that we can vote. Yeah. So we shouldn't not vote. We shouldn't just pretend that that's nothing. Yeah. Um, I mean, literally, there's been huge groups of the population that weren't allowed to vote. And people died. Mm -hmm. Like the Ku Klux Klan murdered people. Yeah. Matter of fact, the Ku Klux Klan murdered a white woman who was on those freedom rides trying to help. You know, so that's the legacy that we want. We don't just say like, uh, "Stop trying to make me feel guilty about being white." There's no guilt in that at all. God made us white. The 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 thing is, what kind of per what kind of person are we going to choose to be yeah. with the situation we're given? You know, this woman gave her life. I wish I could remember her name right now. I've just been running my mouth all day, and I, I haven't had a minute to stop and think today. But, um, you know, she gave her life. She made a choice of what kind of person she was going to be, what kind of legacy she was going to leave, you know. But a lot of other people did, too. And so we should vote. But voting by itself doesn't change anything. We shouldn't do that and then feel like, well, I did what I could. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. If, uh, you know... After that, we have to put pressure on these people. You know, if there was a really, str if if the Occupy movement was swelling, yeah. you know, and, and and just you know going hard all over the place, um, Obama would be under pressure the way that the conservatives are with the Tea Party. Yeah, you know, the conservatives have to cater to the Tea Party, and without the Tea Party, you can't win. 
without the Christian, without the, those fundamental radical Christians, you can't win on the on the Republican side. And you see that with Mitt Romney, they'll change they'll change their religious beliefs yeah. to win. Right. Before, when Mitt Romney was running against um, four years ago, they were like, "No, he's a Mormon. He's not even a Christian." Yeah. You know. And they turned on him because of that. And all kind of ugly stuff came out because he was Mormon. Now he's the candidate, so now they're changing their message to say Mormons are Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mormons weren't Christians to them four years ago. Now Mormons are Christians because they need him to win. You know, I'm not saying that we should have that kind of like lie deception machine on the left, but what we should have is, I mean, if Occupy Homes, what we're doing in Minneapolis, if that was popping in every city, um, and people were just like, yo, the bank should renegotiate with these with this family. They did everything they could. They lost their house because the economy sucks. You know, they got behind on their payments. They're trying to pay. Fuck that. If you want to take them out of there, you have to arrest all of us. Yeah. 37 of us got arrested at this house. Yeah. Fighting for this uh, Mexican-American family. Because the banks, you know, they deal differently with people of color because they think people don't care. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they've taken too many white people's house now. Yeah. So now white people are like, fuck that. You're not taking these people's house. So, you know, if that was cracking all over the country, if it was going down like that, the president... And all the Congress people would be talking about a bill to change the way that banks negotiate with families in foreclosure. They'd be passing a bill, and 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 the banks would have to abide by it. Yeah. Um, you know, if there were huge movements in the streets saying we don't want these drones mm -hmm. to be to be blowing up houses and villages in Pakistan, countries we're not even at war with. Right. We think this is wrong. We don't want it. They would have to. They'd have to honor that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so that's 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 something we need to keep track of, man. Well, shit, man. We have definitely chopped it up about some real shit tonight. Um, we got more music to play on the show, so um, before we go, we definitely got to tell them where to find the album, where to hear the message. Um, well, my album's available everywhere. The music is so iTunes um, and Best Buy and we have our own store called Fifth Element so fifthelementonline.com has our, has our that you can get stuff directly from us um, and then I'm, I'm Brother Ali on Facebook and Twitter B-R-O-T-H-E-R-A-L-I so at Brother Ali or Facebook.com slash Brother Ali or Brother Ali.com any of those places you can see our, all of our videos and information and all that good stuff all right, dope, man. Got to thank you for coming through, Brother Ali, man. Um, we got, um, we're going to keep it moving with a new one from uh, Young Jeezy. It's called Get Right. That's a dope song. Dope, oh. dope, dope. All right, on Juice Radio's Fresh Juice, it's Young Jeezy, Get Right. Let's go. Yeah, the only one that I'll ever know, and it's stressing yeah. the soul. A God bless yeah. the soul. Oh, Lord. All right, 6 a.m., let's see what's up. Uh, not a, not a, not a dance, Jay goes 